crises and disasters across the world is increasing and having a big impact on tourism. It is essential, therefore, that tourism managers and their stakeholders know how to deal with them. So what defines crises and disasters? Are they the same thing? How can a crisis or disaster impact tourist destinations and businesses? And what are the key challenges in responding to them? When we refer to crises, we refer to events that are human-related and self-inflicted due to inept management structures, practices or failure to adapt to change. Examples include economic crises such as the 2008 financial crisis. They also include crises related to political instability, war or terrorist attacks health-related crises such as biosecurity incidents, respiratory illnesses and pandemics are also classed as crises. In contrast, disasters are natural hazards. Humans have little control over these hazards. Examples include earthquakes, tsunamis, cyclones, bushfires and flooding. Tourism is vulnerable to natural disasters because tourist activities often take place in disaster-prone locations such as mountain areas, national parks and coastlines. Crises and disasters can affect tourism because they create uncertainty. This uncertainty influences tourist demand and tourist willingness to travel to areas affected by a crisis or disaster. We can see from the United Nations World Tourism Organisation chart the impact of a number of negative events including political crises, economic crises and natural disasters over recent years. This effect can be short-lived in the case of a health crisis or can be long-running as in the case of the continuing political instability in the Middle East. The size and frequency of crises and disasters will influence travel demand and the extent of negative impacts faced by the tourism industry. We have outlined what tourism crises and disasters are, but to understand the key challenges in responding to the impacts of these, we need to understand the nature of these incidents. Tourism crises and disasters have a life cycle that has several stages. First, there is a pre-event phase. Here, plans can be put in place to reduce the chance of a crisis or disaster occurring, or reducing the size of the impact if it does occur. This proactive approach can help speed up response and recovery efforts. However, most destinations and businesses tend to be reactive and commence planning once a crisis or disaster hits. This reactive approach means that crisis or disaster ends up managing them rather than the other way round. Second comes an initial response phase, which restores communication, electricity and transport networks. This is essential before tourists can return to the destination. The third phase involves a longer recovery period, which is all about business recovery and restoring economic activity to the affected destination. This may involve communication and marketing activities to encourage tourists to return. Finally, in the fourth phase, the destination returns to its original state before the crisis or disaster took place. Sometimes this might be a new and improved state. An improved state can occur because destinations may actually benefit in the long term from a crisis or disaster. Benefits might include new tourism infrastructure, transportation networks, and even new tourists. The team at the destination site might also learn valuable lessons that will improve their future planning should there be another crisis. This topic area also looks at the key challenges tourism managers encounter when a crisis or disaster strikes. Firstly, the tourism industry comprises many sectors, levels of government and other stakeholders. This makes leadership and coordination of recovery very complex. How is this best undertaken and who is responsible for leading it? Secondly, sensationalist and inaccurate reporting of crises and disasters can have a negative impact on consumer demand and lead to travel cancellations. How can the tourism industry effectively counter these negative images and manage the risk perceptions of consumers? Another challenge is concerned with recovery marketing. How and when 
Should recovery marketing occur to attract tourists back to an affected destination and what messaging strategies are likely to be most effective? Finally, what can be learned from crises and disasters to improve their future planning? How should these lessons be shared? As crises and disasters across the world grow in number and continue to impact tourism, it's even more important for the tourism industry and its stakeholders to know how to plan and respond.